Welcome to today's session. Today we would be talking about the concept of orbit, the various terms related to orbit and its path and the various types of orbit. Now firstly let's understand what is an orbit. So you have earth and a satellite and this satellite moves around the earth in a path which is known as orbit. Now this satellite has two forces that act on it. One force that tries to bring the satellite close to the earth and that is the centripetal force. So, if I talk about forces, there are two kinds of forces. One is centripetal force, another is centrifugal force. So, centrifugal force is the force that tries to take the object away. So, this is the object. It tries to take the object away, and centripetal force tries to bring the object closer to the center. Here, the centripetal force that is acting is gravity. And the centrifugal force tries to pull the satellite outside and that is due to the velocity of the satellite. Now at every position these two forces try to cancel out one another. As a result the satellite is able to maintain its path and this path is known as the orbit. Now the path of the satellite can be of two types. It can be either circular path or elliptical path. Now I have a paper here. I have rolled this paper. If I cut this into a straight path, the orbit that I get is a kind of circular orbit. And that is the orbit that I have drawn here. The other kind of orbit can be if I cut this paper or this cone across a slanting line. So if I am cutting this across a slanting line, this is an orbit which I am getting and this is an elliptical orbit. So any orbit has a conic section and this conic section if I try to cut it horizontally, it would give me a circular path. If I try to cut it along a slanting line, it would give me a elliptical path. Now this is in green I have mentioned a elliptical path and the other is a circular path. Now whenever there is an elliptical path there are two edges. One edge is close to it and the other edge is far away from it. The edge that is far away is known as apogee and the edge that is closer to the earth would be known as the perigee. Now easier way to remember this is, so if, if I say this in Hindi, I say this is pass, so P close to P, okay, so P means pass and P means perigee, so I can remember perigee is the closest section and apogee is the farthest section. Now when I am saying this section is closest, that means when the orbit is rotating into an elliptical path, this section would be covered at a faster rate. So the duration of orbit in this path would be less because it would cover it very rapidly in contrast to apogee where it will remain for a longer duration as it has to cover more. So this is the distance that it would be covering. As a result it would take more time and the speed would be slow. I, I, can, I, can, I cannot say the speed would be slow, but I can say it would take more time to cover it. So uh, it would appear as if uh, this is slower as co in contrast to the section on the perigee. So this is the basic concept of orbit. Now there are two terms that we usually talk about. One is posigrade and other is retrograde. Posigrade means the orbit is rotating in the same direction 
uh, as the rotation of the earth so it's moving in the same direction in contrast to it retrograde orbits move in opposite direction to the rotation of earth now in either of these cases there is a geocenter that is located and that is the center of gravity whenever there is a path that a orbit is following that orbit has its center of gravity and the point where the center of gravity lies is known as the geocenter now these are some of the basic terms that we have discussed about the orbit and the satellites in orbit now the next topic we would be discussing is precision now what is precision consider a top that is spinning when it's spinning it's into a motion now precision occurs whenever there is a tilt and as the top spins around it starts to towards the end it starts to wobble and that wobbling is a kind of precision that is happening so it's changing its axis from this to this and finally it will fall down so that is what is precision now this is a general gyroscope that has been demonstrated here to show what is precision now let's understand what is the precision of the earth so i have an earth diagram of earth here earth is rotated uh, earth is tilted at an axis of 23.5 degrees okay if it was not tilted this would have been the axis and this would have been the center so this angle is 23.5 degrees and along this angle the rotation of earth takes place so as i mentioned previously tilt is a necessary condition for precision to occur so earth's precisional cycle completes in 26000 years or i can say 1 degree precision takes place in 72 years now if i try to understand the precision of a orbit here is what is happening as you can see you have the earth and this is the satellite that is rotated uh, that is moving around the earth and as you can see this was the original path it has shifted it pa its path and this is the precisional cycle of the orbit or i can say this is the nodal precision now nodal precision is important specifically in case of one type of satellites that we would be understanding that's the sun synchronous satellites now when i talk about sun synchronous satellites the most important thing here is uh, i'm trying to have a nodal precision uh, nodal precision is required in case of sun synchronous satellite because there is a kind of uh, approximate i could say it's constant relative to the sun so when i'm saying it's constant relative to the sun there is a nodal precision that is very important in case of sun synchronous satellite now to understand this let's first understand the types of orbits so if i classify broadly i can say there are three types of orbits low medium and high orbit sun synchronous orbits usually fall under the category of either low or medium orbits now what is unique about sun synchronous as i said they remain constant relative to the sun so what is happening there is for example sun synchronous satellite is over brazil at say uh, 10 am so every time every day at 10 am it would be over brazil so what is maintained here is the time so every time it would be coming on to the brazil at the same time that's 10 am in the morning now sun synchronous work best in sunlight as the name suggest the next are low low orbits now low orbit example is a polar or a near polar orbit 
Now, what is a special characteristics of a uh, polar or a lower polar orbit? So, supposedly this is Earth and this is rotating on its axis. Now, a polar orbit rotates perpendicular to this or across the poles. So, that is a north-south rotation. So, it completes its axis in 99 minutes or I could say approximately 90 minutes or one and a half hours. So, that is the approximate cycle of a polar orbit or a polar uh, satellite that is into a orbit. We also call it near polar orbits. Now, uh, the best examples are for polar orbits are space shuttles. If I talk very specific, I can say Hubble space shuttle. Now, what is a benefit of a low orbit satellite? When the satellite is in low orbit, that means the distance from the earth is very less. So, if the distance is less, what is the benefit? If I want to put any new um, instrument into the shuttle, I can do that. So, installing of new instruments or repair of any instrument or equipment at the shuttle becomes very easy in case of low orbit because they are operating at a very low orbit. The next is medium orbit. Medium orbits are usually classified into two types. You have the semi-synchronous and the Molniya orbit. When I talk about semi-synchronous, semi-synchronous usually complete or usually go through the same place on the earth two times a day. So, semi-synchronous cross two times a day. A good example would be a kind of GPS uh, navigation devices which require triangulation. So, you have three satellites that should be in line to locate a position and semi-synchronous satellites uh, semi-synchronous satellites usually cross the same position two times a day. The next is Molniya orbit. Now, Molniya orbit is a kind of elliptical orbit. It has high eccentricity. Eccentricity means it is not circular. It is kind of having an elliptical motion. And when I say it has good eccentricity, um, some of the examples of Molniya orbit would be the Cyrus radio satellite and other Russian satellites which are placed into elliptical orbit. The next is the high orbit. If I say high orbit, I usually say uh, kind of geostationary orbits. Or geosynchronous and these geostationary or geosynchronous are located at a height of around 36,000 kilometers in contrast to semi-synchronous which is around 26,000 kilometers. Now at this height they try to cancel out the effect and they remain stationary with respect to earth. So they are transmitting information about the same section of the earth always. So, they are relative to earth. They remain constant. Now, what is the benefit of this? I have a, a TV channel coming into my home. Now, imagine if I have a same program that is relayed onto my TV. Uh, which I can see on one day and I like to see that program in continuity but it is not available on the other days of the week. That would disrupt the communication process. So, I need definitely a satellite that is on to that position always and would always relay the information to me. As a result, geostationary satellites are used since they are into 
the same position they have the rotation period similar to earth that is 26 hours 56 minutes and 4 seconds and they capture the information of the same place every time so i can say they are best used in communication satellites communication or phone in case of rescue and research operations so if a ship is kind of sinking into a water this geostationary satellite can provide ample information about that region and relay that information directly a common example of geostationary satellite is insect uh, example of sun synchronous satellite that we previously talked about is radar set or i could say irs so these are some of the common satellites that are into either geostationary orbit or into a uh, sun synchronous orbit the other important uh, benefits of this orbit would be weather monitoring so geostationary is important for weather monitoring it is very important for weather monitoring just because of a sole reason that since it's always on the it's always capturing the same section of the earth it would be constantly providing information about the weather conditions so we have understood in this class about the basic elements of orbit the basic uh, the basic terminologies that we need to know and most more importantly about the low medium and the high orbits and the kind of satellites that are launched into each orbit uh, we would be covering further topics in geography in further classes till then have a good day ahead